Hello, everybody. We are back, and we are finally ready to start year three. That's right, finally into year three. We'll take a look at the preseason polls here real quick, and this is just a preseason 126, everybody, and we are smack right in the middle at 63, where we rank among the teams. And, of course, the official coaches poll says Texas A&M is the best team in the country with the defending national champion Florida Gators at two. And, uh, not too surprising, again, pretty standard for what we see as far as the top ten goes. Uh, nothing really surprising, but, of course, anything can happen throughout the season to completely turn that upside down. So, we'll see how things go this year. You can take a look at the top 25 as we go through. And the first game of the year for Old Dominion is at Nebraska. It's going to be a tough game because it's one of the toughest environments in all of college football and you know this team is pretty well rated they've got a junior quarterback in Tommy Armstrong starting a dual threat and uh, they've got a really solid set of halfbacks so it's a rushing attack that we're really going to have to worry about defensively and uh, there is our Heisman watchman Zell is favored to win again so we'll see in his senior season obviously Realistically, I don't. He will probably be going to the NFL after this season, his sophomore year. But of course, this is a video game, so we get different results than real life. And then the preseason All-Conference USA: Caleb Taylor, middle linebacker, and kicker Anthony White are all first team. And none of our offensive players made it. Uh, it's not surprising because many of the offensive players did not even play last year or got very little playing time. Lost a lot of seniors there. So TJ Ricks, Marcus Massey, and Malik Johnson all make the Conference USA second team for the preseason. And here's how the ratings stack up. Although, don't put too much stock into overall ratings. Uh, Old Dominion has played a lot better than their ratings have suggested. And there's some of the top players for Nebraska and the top players for Old Dominion, but of course David Washington, while he has one of the better overall ratings on the team, he's not starting at quarterback. And we'll get a look at Josh Silva and David Dixon, the two redshirt freshmen that are taking the place of Taylor Heineke and Tyree Lee, who graduated last season. And so here we go, the opening kickoff in year three is officially on. Yes, Donald Simmons, his first career return, not much, but we'll take a look. At number five, Josh Silva out of Portsmouth, Virginia, finally getting his start. He was actually an athlete when he was recruited, and he was recruited, I was recruiting him as a defensive back initially, and uh, saw he had some good quarterback skills, and Philip Dickens gets his first reception, and now David Dixon will get his first carry. Dickens, of course, uh, he's been on the team since the dynasty started but he's so low behind uh, some of our other receivers that he wasn't really a factor Brandon Ellison one of my recruits he comes in to make that play and David Dixon is wide open on this third and three makes a juke move and making the defender look silly and a 23 yard reception for number 22 the freshman halfback getting it done already on third and four Silva drops back and finds Kirk Spellman who wears the number one this year. He switched to the number one as he is the number one wide receiver. Second and ten now, an option. We're going to see a lot of this. And look at Josh Silva showing his moves. 17 yards, and we'll see a lot of those triple options and various other forms of the option. Hand off to David Dixon on second and goal. Gets his first career touchdown. And a good start. Old Dominion's offense went right down the field and took it to... A somewhat struggling Nebraska defense, the Blackshirts don't really know their identity yet. They've really had some issues the past few years. But Tommy Armstrong, the dual threat quarterback, very much like Josh Silva, going to have to keep an eye on him along with Amani Cross, the big power back who is very hard to bring down, and he shows it right there. He's got a lot of size, too. A play action for Armstrong, and he decides to take off with it. He's got plenty of room to run, and that was a 15-yard gain. For number four. First and ten. Now give it off to Amani Cross. And he's going to ride the defender for about eight yards. Again, he's a big power back. Hard to bring down. And on third and three, Armstrong has plenty of time and delivers for a nice first down gained. Cedric Johnson. 
And the big red machine is rolling right down the field. Amani Cross goes ahead for yet another 10 yard gain. My goodness, they have walked right down the field. Both offenses having great first drives, and Armstrong keeps it on the option for a touchdown, adding another rushing touchdown to his career numbers. So we're tied at seven. Both offenses, like I said, had some great first drives to start this game. And look at this throw. Precision to Kirk Spellman. Silva may be showing that he's a better passer than uh, his ratings may indicate. But on second and eight, that all goes away as Boaz Joseph, Boaz, Boaz Joseph, <laughs> gets the interception, a, a bad throw intended for Philip Dickens. And so that is the first interception, Josh Silva's career, and actually his first incompletion. He was perfect up to that point. Third and one, though, and look at Corey Taylor, the backup strong safety, comes in and knocks Monty Cross for a four-yard loss. And so about a 50-yard field goal here, but not, no problem. Nebraska has a history of having great kickers and continuing with that, a 50-yarder, and it's a 10-7 Nebraska lead here early in the second quarter. Now, things are looking interesting. I mean, Old Dominion is staying in this game. Their defense has not played bad, really, all things considered. And a 49-yard Donald Timmons returning his great field position for Silva and the ODU offense. And look at Dixon showing he has a little burst, and he is fast. Third and one, if he can get some open space, he will burn defenses all year. And look at number 22 powering ahead for four yards as he can only get it done. Harvey Taylor comes in to give Dixon a breather. First and ten for Josh Silva. Plenty of time to throw and he finds Kevin Privet, another new name in the receiving core. Another guy who's been on the team for several years at this point. First and ten. Silva's going to just take off using his legs and takes a little hit there but he gets nine and he gets right back up. Third and one. Harvey Taylor in motion out of the pistol. A new formation we'll be seeing a lot of this year as well. Dixon gets an easy 11 yards. My goodness, this offense is looking pretty fantastic, guys. I don't know about you, but a Big Ten defense can't handle this. Kevin Privet sneaks in behind the defenders. They didn't see him. And the first touchdown pass of Josh Silva's career here. Look at this. He just snuck in behind the defense, caught them off guard by running the corner route. They must have thought he was going to go inside, and instead he cut it back outside a beautiful toss for a touchdown here. And now third and six screenplay across. Gets met by who else but TJ Ricks, the junior linebacker who I think will be an All-American by next season. So, look at this. Second and ten. Silva running a little triple option. You'll see that out of the pistol especially this year. Very, very good personnel to run that kind of offense. Silva can't find anybody open. The coverage is fantastic. And he just kind of whips this one into the defender's back because there was nothing on that play. The defense had that Perfectly covered. And so under two minutes to go, Nebraska is going to try and find a way to get in this game. So they're down by four. Well, they are in this game, but to try and take the lead back and get back into the uh, fray. But uh, they wouldn't be able to do anything else, and that would end the half. Old Dominion 14-10. Could they possibly pull off the unexpected on the road at a Big Ten? It hasn't happened very much against big time conference teams. Old Dominion struggled against teams from the uh, BCS conferences but there the passing and rushing yardage very even for Old Dominion only the one turnover has been uh, kind of the one downfall of the game so far but they are leading 14-10 so things aren't going well and you have to wonder what has Nebraska got to do to try and take that lead back well they need to run the ball more because that's what they do well and that's what was doing so well on the one drive that they did score the touchdown so you got to keep giving it to cross and give armstrong opportunities and look at cross making some big moves for almost 20 yards right around midfield second and three and they're just going to keep giving it to him because it's working why not why go away from what works so first and ten they run a shotgun with two backs and it's terrell newby Getting a game of about 15 there. My goodness. They're doing exactly what I was saying. Got to run the ball. But Armstrong on an option runs right into Caleb Taylor. And Taylor has seen way too many of that in his career to be fooled. And so Nebraska would settle for the field goal. It's a one-point game. And Silva tosses it on the option to David Dixon. He is open. And actually this play would count as a forward pass. 
it counted as a passing play there, uh, apparently because the pitch went forward. But nonetheless, it resulted in a giant gain in first and goal. Silva's going to run around, spin around, and throw it. Finds Kirk Spellman in the back of the end zone. And just like that, Silva is having quite a day to start his career. Look at that pass into the back of the end zone to Kirk Spellman. Maybe the only name that you guys recognize from that receiving core uh, last year. Marcus Massey trying to bring down Tommy Armstrong. He's going to burst it all the way. 52 yards right down the field trying to get this game back in reach. It's an 8 point game so it's still one possession. But Larry Alston jumps the screen to Jordan Westerkamp and Alston is all by himself. Does he have enough speed to outrun the wide receiver? Can he do it? He can't. But he gets inside the 10. And that's Nebraska's first turnover of the day and it could be a deadly one. On second and goal, the wishbone. We'll see this every once in a while. Silva on a little option. And he'll keep it for about four yards. Third and goal will set up in that big jumbo formation. And it's stopped. David Dixon gets stuffed right at the line of scrimmage. That was too easy for the defense. And so it would be an old Dominion field goal to make it 24-13. to And Jack Tocho, with assistance from Chris Cleveland, makes that stop. The sophomore transfer from North Carolina State TJ Ricks rips down the quarterback he he has a thing against quarterbacks he hates quarterbacks he goes after him all the time and here look at that that's John Jordan big John Jordan breaking up that pass the redshirt freshman defensive tackle who I'm very proud to have recruited because I think he's going to be fantastic Josh Silva is going to take off he has lots of green to run with and look at that move he puts on him. this is why he is so good and he is outperforming, by the way, his expectations. I did not expect this quarterback to be this good right out the gates, especially on the road. And look at this. Brandon Nelson had it in the end zone. It was a free touchdown, and he dropped it. So it would be another field goal. It's a 14-point game here at the end of the third quarter. Third and four. TJ Ricks, his vendetta against quarterbacks continues because that's a minus five-yard loss there. For Tommy Armstrong. So start of the fourth quarter and David Dixon tearing up this defense 22 yards. 22 for 22 there. How do you like that? But on third and one he would be stuffed out of that run from the pistol formation. We're at the 39 yard line and he said hey let's go for it. Why not? It's a little bit too long for a field goal and a little triple option but Nebraska has us completely covered. They covered every aspect of that option perfectly. And so it would be a turnover on downs. And so it's the Huskers' chance to try and get back in this game. And a 12-yard run by Armstrong is going to give them a little momentum here. Cross gets the handoff. And man, this defense all of a sudden just can't stop anything. But on second and 18, after a penalty and a loss, Armstrong is going to get completely destroyed by Justin Weddle and Marcus Massey. The underclassmen getting it done out of the defensive backfield. Third and 23. So Old Dominion drops all their defensive backs into coverage. And it's Travis Gonzalez, the senior cornerback, taking it down. My goodness. Did not expect this performance from Old Dominion. I did not honestly expect this to happen. But it's happening. And out of the wishbone again, a little triple option. Silva pitches it out to Dixon. This time it's not a forward pass. 13 yards. Dixon crosses 100 yards on his first game ever. And Old Dominion would pin Nebraska back way in their own territory. Armstrong, look at this catch. I wanted to highlight this catch by Tariq Allen because this was a beautiful catch. Look at this sideline awareness. Gets those feet in bounds. Beautiful. Under a minute to go, Nebraska really trying to keep themselves in this game. They drove right down the field. Armstrong throwing, and this one's going to be picked off. Third interception, this one by Malik Johnson, the strong safety. And that's it. That's the game. Ultimate somehow pulls off the big road win. I don't know how it happened, but David Dixon, look at that game he had. And Josh Silva had himself a great first game as well. Could not have gone any better for Old Dominion. So we start off the year 1-0. Surprisingly, I did not even expect that to happen, but it did. Silva, great game. 193 yards passing, two touchdowns, had 98 yards rushing. And uh, just couldn't have asked for a better 
game against a pretty tough opponent. And here are your players of the week. And, uh, well, we had two Conference USA players of the week, both offense and defense. But uh, it'll be an interesting game going into uh, first home game of the year against Virginia. And they won their first game of the year. So it'll be two teams 1-0 taking on an in-state rivalry. I'll see.